Hello. Uh, I know it's late. Uh, it was a ton of knowledge, uh, deep engineering, deep dives, really great things. Now I prepared something for dessert. This is the last presentation for today, so let's keep it quick. Uh, my name is Michał Brysz. I'm AI architect. My official job title is data science architects for data science, AI and ML. Uh, and I work uh, here in Krakow at IBM Expert Labs. Let's go straight to the point. So, uh, here you can see that um, example architecture of generative AI application. Exactly, this is the retrieval augmented generation thing. I know it's small, so let's uh, talk briefly on the higher level. Uh, on the left hand side, you can see the engineer, engineers, users. On the middle, we've got the backend of the application, we've got the service to create embeddings uh, we discussed uh, recently. Uh, we've got some embedding storage, some UI, and so on. But on every application, at some point, 90% of cases, at some point we need to communicate with some external service. We need to send a call to the API, to the SaaS, uh, to get um, to send the prompt to the service where the large uh, language model is hosted, and we get back uh, the result. Uh, so let's think about the case that uh, we cannot do this. We cannot transfer our data out of our, our company. We don't want to transfer our data from European Union to some uh, overseas, uh, for example, country. Uh, so this is why the, uh, where the whole fun starts. I mean, especially if you work for some big enterprise client, if you do something for the bank, insurance company, etc. So probably you need to go beyond the prototyping, beyond the API call and so on. So uh, I will tell you how to make your application more robust, more bulletproof uh, and more compliant. Uh, and I focus mostly on the open source things. So you know IBM has a lot of great proprietary products, but here in this presentation, uh, I will focus mostly on the things that you can try this evening. After the presentation, get it from GitHub. Uh, okay, so to make your application ready for the production environment, you might think about uh, improving the three areas. First, the model. Second area, the private model deployment. And the third area will be the safety, security and compliance. So let's uh, take a closer look on the model. Because uh, First thing, uh, when you will be considering the model for your generative AI application, will be probably, okay, at some point, the model available as a, sub, uh, as a service, as an API, as a black box, will be not sufficient for your uh, customer needs, for your business case. So probably you will select some open source model. This is the market trend I see uh, also, open source models. Uh, but first, you need to check the license for the model, because probably you don't want to use some proprietary model for the commercial use, which is not allowed, for example. Second thing, also, you should check the license for the model training data set, because model can be open source and we've allowed a commercial use case, but uh, the training data could be without license, so you cannot actually use it for the commercial uh, application. And then... <coughs> Uh, you have to check the governance process because uh, each model was created on some data set. So you have to check how that data was collected. Uh, was it any like data clearance process, uh, maybe some, uh, some other data filtering? So you have to check it out. And uh, here are the examples of the Granite model, the last model uh, from Chris uh, Christopher's list. Uh, that's, that model was released the new, on the new version uh, this, uh, this week. And that model contains the permissive Apache 2 license, so you can use that model for the commercial use. More, more of this, uh, we also open source the training data sets and methodologies of that data preprocessing, so we can be sure that, for example, for code generation, that model was trained on the uh, data and on the code that allows the commercial uh, use. And also you can check the governance process. Uh, okay, you selected the right model, you checked the license, so now part of for the uh, technical aspects. So me and you, we've got the same models available for open source. 
So probably you will need to uh, customize that models. And you should, uh, for the customization, you should think about first the model size, because we've got available different models. Each model has different size, 2 billion parameters, 8 billion parameters. For example, for Rama, it's uh, 405 billion parameters. You have to keep in mind that uh, you will need to adapt that model process, for example, fine tune. And you have to be um, sure that you can do this, you've got the proper hardware. Probably the smaller models will be better uh, for you. Another thing is the intended use of the model, because uh, we've got the generic, general purpose models, like the foundation models, but we've got also models fine-tuned for the specific tasks. For example, here you can get the granite for the uh, code generation, even for time series processing, and even model dedicated with some built-in security checks. Um, speaking about the model customization, so with your open source model, uh, me and you, we have the same models available on the market, probably to differentiate and to create your own application, you will try to customize that model output. There are many ways. First, well known on that room, uh, retrieval augment generation tactic, we connect some external source of knowledge to the model, we calculate the embeddings, we use that embeddings to create better prompt and to fill uh, that knowledge to the model and get the right results. Another uh, approach uh, is the in-context learning, sometimes combined with the retrieval augmented generation to get the right examples of the data, to put this in the context and build better prompt. Also, it is related with prompt engineering, so we can navigate to prompt tuning, because prompt engineering means to create the, uh, the prompt that gives you the best results. My prompts could be better than yours, and the opposite way, but also to, uh, to find the best prompt to get, generate the right uh, output, probably you will need to uh, do some search, some grid search, some, uh, some tuning of that, of that model, and there are different uh, also services to automate the prompt, the parameters for that prompt. Uh, so also with your open source model, you should be able to, uh, to do that thing at scale and on time. And uh, at the end, the last thing, you can do the fine tuning for the entire model. But, but as we know, you need to have a skill, the hardware, the time and the budget for this. Uh, but also remember that probably it will be easier to fine tune smaller model rather than the uh, bigger one at home or like or on tight budget. Okay, so now we know uh, the aspect of the model selection. The next uh, aspect is the private model deployment, because especially when you are experimenting with the model at home uh, on your own laptop, uh, probably you don't want to send the data to the external company, especially the sensitive data. Uh, so I recommend personally, uh, to deploy the model on your own laptop. I know eight gigabytes could be too, not too much, but 16 gigabytes, so most of us uh, can have that kind of memory in, in the work workstation. You can, for example, serve that model locally. Here, the Granite model, you can ask some questions, share some sensitive data, get the response and data prompt and your response stays on your laptop. You only pull the model from the internet, from the repository. You can experiment locally with that model. Uh, okay, better use case for developers, for engineers, uh, because uh, with the open source models, you can also build your own private and free code assistant. Uh, there is a great um, integration between the Granite code model, Visual Studio, uh, and Olama. There is a plugin to Visual Studio to do this. So you can actually uh, take your code, uh, your code stays on your laptop, you've got the model also on your laptop, and you can interact with the code assistant model uh, privately. Here in this example, uh, I asked the model to explain the code, because uh, code assistants can generate code, but also can explain the code, prepare documentation, write unit tests. This is what data scientists like the most, uh, I think. Uh, so here in this example, I've got some source code. I ask the model to explain that code. So that model refers to the actual file on my system, and then it generated the, uh, the description of what that code does. 
So I recommend also to try uh, this. There's extension for, uh, for Visual Studio Code with this. Okay, we deployed our model privately on our laptop, but now we want to do this at scale for the client, for the large, uh, large deployment. So we need uh, the last part that, okay, you cannot see the right hand side part, uh, the LLM deployment uh, on your private space. So this is proprietary, I think. Unfortunately, you need to uh, buy the license for this. So you cannot uh, try this after the, the talk, but generally speaking, there are options that you can deploy some, uh, some application on the different clouds. So here is where the hybrid cloud world uh, starts. So uh, IBM has some system that you can deploy on premises on IBM cloud or even Azure, Google cloud or uh, AWS. So you can deploy that system. You deploy OpenShift, you deploy something called Cloud Pack for Data. But on top of this, you can deploy the What's Next AI with that LLMs. Granite, but also other open source uh, models. So it means that at the end of the day, you will have the private deployment, the serving endpoint uh, for the inference for the open source models. Uh, you should remember, but still it requires some hardware. So for example, to host Granite uh, 8 billion models, you need to attach to that deployment at least one GPU. Uh, the larger Granite 20 billion uh, model for code will also fit to one GPU. But for example, for Llama 3.1, 70 billion, you will need at least 18 GPUs attached to that thing. On top of this, another GPUs to create embeddings. If you would like to do this at home, also you can try uh, to deploy the VLLM, what Chris mentioned also. Uh, this is the open source framework to serve uh, large language models. IBM has some fork of that uh, software with some fix. Okay, and the last part, uh, which is the sec uh, safety, security, and compliance. So, you should remember that generative models are generative things. So, you cannot control actually 100% what will be the output. So also users will try to explore that possibilities. Like in this case, I tried to uh, convince the model to say bad words uh, like a pirate. And uh, actually the uh, hub filter uh, works well here. So the answer was okay, the pirate style, but the model says uh, that, okay, I'm professional, I'm helpful. Uh, let's keep our conversation respectful and non-political. So actually, it works uh, good uh, here, but remember, your users will try to explore what are the gaps uh, of that. Uh, you can also enable some filtering there, but also you can use also open source model with built-in uh, controls after this, like for example, Granite Guardian. On top of this, this is the, the topic for the separate at least one day workshop. Uh, but if you would like to uh, make your generative application more secure, uh, more compliant, uh, you can refer to the framework called uh, Generative AI Controls Framework Safe, Secure and Compliant AI Adoption Approach White Paper. There is a link, it will be on the materials for you. Uh, so uh, there is a catalog of the different security controls on the each level uh, your application like from the infrastructure for data, for models, for application. And uh, almost last but not least, uh, you should be um, sure that your model is not biased. It's not generating like biased output. Uh, there are also dedicated things for this. Another great open source uh, package is AI Fairness 360, where you can evaluate your model uh, and check your model predictions uh, against bias. So there are like, dedicated checks. This is the Python package. You can plug in this to, into your Jupyter notebook and explore if you have biased model or not. And uh, the last thing, uh, very important, because uh, probably as an engineers, we are not so interested in this, but uh, someone will come to you and reach out and ask about if you are compliant with the EU AI Act. 
it, uh, this act came to force uh, recently. You've got the time until the end of February to check if your system is allowed or not uh, by the law. And after this, you can, you can be fined. Uh, fines are expensive there because it's like percent of the global revenue of the company. So it may be a risky game to try to trick one. Uh, so remember that uh, you should be also compliant with, uh, with this thing. We can help. Okay, so going straight to the point, this is the summary. So uh, to make your application using generative AI more secure and more robust, I recommend to check three aspects. The model, the model deployment, and the safety, security, and compliance aspect. Okay, that was a quick one, probably, but I know that you like it. Quick, so uh, first thing, some contact details. If you like the slides, I know the links are small, so probably it will be the best to ping me the LinkedIn and I will send you the, the PDF with the active links. Uh, we've got also a great team in Krakow. And the last thing for today, uh, this week we opened also Granite Playground. So you can navigate to this page and there is a Granite model exposed publicly. No registration, no credit card, but limit to the 20 uh, tokens, uh, sorry, 20 prompts per day, I think. And you can play with the Granite model. On top of this, uh, you can check out that models through Hugging Face or Olama systems. Okay, I think we've got some space for questions. Um, have you published a paper um, for the guardrails model? Mm -hmm. I know that there is a paper for the guard, uh, granite itself. There is a part of something there about that thing uh, for the uh, guardian models. I need to check. But I know that there is a like, big paper about the granite model itself. Okay. That's, uh... A lot of vendors uh, have those models and there is no benchmarks, they just say they work. Um, Amazon has one, um, Azure has one, and they just say, use it, it works, there is no paper, no benchmarks. Um, so, IPF has big, like long tradition of the research, so actually this is the good approach uh, we try to do this transparent. Yes. So, hello and thank you for the presentation. Uh, so you briefly mentioned this proprietary software being uh, Cloudflare, I believe. Mm -hmm. Could you please quickly uh, explain the functionalities that comes from it? So we know that it can be deployed in a hybrid multi-cloud manner. Um, I'm curious what it, what it offers. Actually. Okay, yes. So actually this is the big uh, so the question was about the cloud pack and their uh, functionalities. So actually, this is the large ecosystem of applications. It's dedicated if you have some sensitive use cases, finances, government, I don't know, and you would like to uh, run the same things like you can do on public cloud, but you want to have your private cloud and deploy that things. So there are like different components for data, for AI, I'm expert on the uh, AI part, so probably you can imagine like, okay, there is what's on next. You, you've got UI, everything lives as a SaaS somewhere. You've got the workflow, like you would like to use that what's on next.ai to train your machine learning models, the classic one and the generative one, the self LLMs and so on. But you would like to deploy that thing on your own infrastructure and work together with other components. So this is the use case. Uh, there are different layers there. You can do this uh, on-premises, uh, public cloud, uh, where you create your private cloud, uh, then you install Kubernetes, OpenShift, CloudPack, and other like, boxes for this system. So briefly, um, that's it. Mostly, uh, it's worth to remember that uh, if you would like to create your cloud, but private, you can do this. Thank you so much. Sure, I guess we will wrap up at this point, because we'll have the discussion panel. So uh, let's meet again in uh, five minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.